T-spins are the most iconic feature of Modern versus Tetris. In this video, I'm going to go over the underlying stacking concepts for you to start seeing and building not just one T-spin double, but keeping your stack in a position to constantly build and send T-spins like your pros. Then, some puzzles for you to apply these concepts. And finally, some pointers on how to practice by yourself and actually start using T-spins in your versus games. Let's begin. This video is going to focus on basic T-spin doubles, which are by far the most common and straightforward T-spin to set up. So, T-spin doubles consist of three things. One, a T-shaped hole. Two, an overhang. And three, just the rest of your stack. So doing T-spin is pretty easy then. As we stack along in our usual gameplay, we just find that T-shaped hole, smack an overhang on it, and fill in the stack. Finally, we execute the T-spin double by soft dropping our T-piece into the hole, rotating, and then hard dropping. Easy. You give it a try. Just find that T-shaped hole. Find that T-shaped hole. Find that T-shaped hole. Okay, you're clearly having trouble. In order to understand how to find and set up T-shaped holes, we're going to need to understand something very key about T-pieces in general. So first, let's break down the anatomy of a T-piece. A T-piece has two flaps on the sides and then a long bit in the middle and that doesn't seem quite right. So the key thing here is that the two sides of the TPs have to be the same height for it to be accommodated. Alright then, how do we use this? So first, we're going to move our well to the middle. Then, we want to pay attention to the difference in height between the two columns adjacent to our well. Once this difference is zero, we have the base of a T-shaped hole. I'm going to call making our height difference zero like this, solving height difference. We can then make our T-shaped hole by filling around this base, or simply using a piece like S or Z to fill in both the T-shaped hole and make an overhang at the same time. So, I'm going to make a revision to our steps to make a T-spin from before. Instead of a T-shaped hole, we're going to look to solve height difference. So, as I'm stacking 6-3 here, I'm constantly paying attention to the height difference. Notice how the difference between my two stacks is rarely greater than 2. Height differences of 1 and 2 are by far the most flexible. There are numerous possibilities to solve these height differences using only one piece. Height differences of three or greater usually require you to either waste a T or to use multiple pieces to solve. But also, it makes filling the stack more complicated because you have to use more pieces to fill around the higher T-shaped hole. In general, the closer our stacks are together, the easier it will be to find a T-spin. But all right, we're getting a little in the weeds with theory here now. Uh, a little crazy for me, I know. But I think it's probably better to learn by doing. Let's get into some puzzles, and I'll explain as we go. So, for these puzzles, we want to be left with a good stack to continue doing TSDs on, not waste a single T-piece for something other than a T-spin, and not break back-to-back, -back, which means not clearing anything that isn't a T-spin or a Tetris. Let's warm up with something easy. Let's try and make one T-spin double on this board in queue. So let's go over our three steps again. Here, we need to solve this height difference of 2, make an overhang, and fill in our stack. Well, immediately, we can solve our height difference of 2 with this S piece. However, once we do that, we're kind of out of luck. We don't have any way to make an overhang, and we're forced to waste T. So instead, let's use S as an overhang and solve height difference with J, then finally fill in the stack with L. So this highlights a key concept. We don't need to solve height difference, then overhang, and then stack in that particular order. Plan ahead with your queue, and find a solution to all three before committing to a placement. In this next puzzle, we're going to try to make one T-spin, clear it, and then make another. So, two T-spins might seem a little daunting, but we see that for the first T-spin, our height difference is solved and the stack is filled in, so we just need to add an overhang. We might be tempted to just plop the O down and do the first T-spin, but then we'd be unable to make another with the remaining Q. There's nothing left in our Q that can solve the height difference of two. So instead, let's use L as the overhang. Then, after we take the T-spin, we have a height difference of one, which we can solve with the upcoming J. Finally, using the S as the overhang, we take the second T-spin. So this highlights another key concept. The overhangs we choose will influence the height difference for the next T-spin. Always be looking ahead to how your stack is going to look after the T-spin, so you don't doom your chances of making another one. 
For this third puzzle, we're just going to make one teaspoon. Alright, so immediately, not many good spots for this Z piece. We might be immediately tempted to put it right here, it's the flattest spot to put it, but what do we do after this? Our height difference is now 1, but there's no possible way to actually solve this without the forbidden single Vino piece. But anyway, the key concept here is that the stack can constrain height difference and possible overhangs. One common bad pattern that we see here is an even too wide gap across your well. These will often need an advanced setup or just more pieces to continue doing teaspoons on, which we'll see in the next puzzle. Either way, let's go back and figure this out again. We have a 2 height difference, which we'll be able to solve with the upcoming O in our queue. So let's put our Z standing up like this and tuck the O piece in. Finally, we'll just use the J as our overhang and take the teaspoon. Hey, wait, that's another 2 height gap. Let's place the J like this instead to avoid that. It's little decisions like this that often stop newer players from being able to consistently do teaspoons. As long as we stay focused and keep track of our stack, this process is actually really simple. So in this puzzle, let's imagine we did end up with that bad 2 wide gap from before. Not all hope is lost though, we just need to think a little harder. Let's make one teaspoon on this stack. So the key concept to highlight here is using multiple pieces to solve height difference. This is often the problem with restricted surfaces, our height difference is greater than 2. We need to solve height difference a little higher and think ahead with a lot more pieces. So we first raise up our right side with the Z, creating a new height difference of 3. Then we can solve this new height difference with J and I, and use L and O to fill in the stack. Finally, we use S as our overhang, and now we're finally done. By using our entire queue, we have just made one single teaspoon. Everything worked out here because, you know, I made the puzzle to be solved. But the point of this final puzzle was to demonstrate that pulling the stack back from a bad state is possible, but there's a lot of extra effort and some luck required to do so. Again, remember to stay focused on the stack and look ahead so you can avoid these situations, but I'll admit that sometimes you just have to cut your losses, waste tea, and keep the stack clean. And that's the end of the puzzles. I've tried to keep things descriptive rather than prescriptive, but I wanted to make it completely clear that high difference is just a framework that I've learned from others and applied myself to organize teaspoon stacking patterns into nice categories. I found it to work for a lot of players, but certainly not everyone. Run with it if it works and discard it if it doesn't, but staying on top of your stack and using your queue is going to be important no matter what. Alright, so finally, how to practice. Honestly, it's just going into any single player mode and trying to do what we've been doing with the puzzles. Stack a center well, try not to waste tea, try not to break back to back. I recommend that you open up with TKI, MKO, some TD opener, or just start stacking if the words I've said sound like random sequences of letters. Which single player mode you choose though has pros and cons, and I'll go over which one I think is best for each skill level. If you're completely new to this, I recommend that you practice in Fortress, which will let you control Z and fix mistakes. There's no time pressure and no pressure to play 100% optimally, just practice applying the concepts and getting a feel for things. Honestly, practicing in Fortress and being able to control Z is super underrated, and I still practice back-to-backs in Fortress from time to time. If Fortress really doesn't feel good to you, you can just use Sprint on your client of choice, but don't pay attention to the time. Once you start to get more comfortable, it's time to start playing modes that will measure your progress. Score attack modes like Blitz or Ultra are good for this because you'll score more for doing T-spins and Tetrises. Also for doing PCs and other loops, but who would do that, right? Personally, I'd strongly prefer Ultra to Blitz because it doesn't have the leveling system that Blitz has which makes your performance in the latter half of the run more important than the beginning. Also, gravity sucks. Aside from just looking at your score, pay attention to your points per block stat, which will roughly let you know how well you're doing at keeping back to back and not wasting T pieces. A good goal to aim for for beginners is to stay above 200. Next, I'll try to address some common concerns I see from beginner to intermediate players. First, don't pay too much attention to the 20 TSD game mode if you're interested in learning T-spins to get better at versus. While all strong offensive players can do 20 TSD, doing 20 TSD won't necessarily make you a strong offensive player. Getting really acquainted with this game mode and the people who grind it will take you down an interesting path to say the least. 
Next, about the different center wells, the three main kinds are going to be 7-2, 6-3, and 5-4. Different patterns will be viable or not viable on different stacks, but if you can apply these general concepts, you'll find that the process is the same, you're just using different shapes. At the end of the day, the distinction between the center wells isn't that important. But I'd probably just recommend sticking to one to start out with, probably 6-3, because it's the most balanced, then branching out once you're comfortable. Next, some things you can do aside from just playing more to get better. A really good way to learn about T-spins at any level is to watch top players. Just try and focus on how they set up their basic overhangs and solve height difference. They may do some more advanced setups, which you can just keep in the back of your mind for now, but I plan to go over them in a later video, so stay tuned for that. Finally, in Versus, where we have to deal with garbage, I have a few tips for you. First, don't cover garbage with your overhang. When given two options for an overhang, we should favor the one that doesn't cover the upcoming garbage hole so we can access it more easily. Second, as much as I've harped on about keeping back to back and not wasting tea, it's not something you need to hyper focus on. Adhere to the ideas of high difference when you're in a safe spot to commit to it, but it's most important that you can keep your stack clean and escape danger quickly. And finally, as a bit of a bonus tip, if you want to feel like a pro gamer, you can set up an overhang over a garbage hole before you've actually uncovered it. This is called a prophecy teaspoon and always feels very cool to do. But honestly, that might be kind of advanced for the target audience of this video. Again, I'm going to make a follow up where I go over some more complicated stuff, so kind of like a teaspoon's 201. Uh, but other than that, I hope you all enjoyed. Now, get out of here and go practice. What are you doing? See ya.